بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين فإن الله سبحانه وتعالى we glorify him we beg Allah سبحانه وتعالى for his love for his mercy for his forgiveness and for his guidance. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam did Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salaa wa min zuriyyati Rabbana wa taqabbal dua O Allah, make us among those who establish salah make us among those who love salah and make our offspring among those who establish salah and O Allah make us among those whom you have accepted their dua and we pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who he will accept their dua tonight insha'Allah and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who frequently make dua for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that dua is ibadah that dua huwa al-ibadah that making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ibadah and dua is the most noble thing a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do. Dua is the most honorable act a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can perform. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us a dua mukhul ibadah. The dua is the essence, is the backbone of ibadah. Because when you make dua, when you make dua, it put you and it make you realize who you are. It put you and pl place you in the position of that slave who acknowledge that he is weak. Dua is an acknowledgement of our weakness, of our helplessness, that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua is a cry. It's a cry from the heart. It's a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you make dua, it makes you humble because you acknowledge that you do not control your destiny. When you raise your hands, it's an acknowledgement that you have no control. And you're saying, oh Allah, I know you love me. I know you hear me. I know you care for me. So I am raising my hands, I'm begging you because I have no control and oh Allah, you are the best of planner. So it's an acknowledgement of your weakness. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he commands us. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah says, call upon me. Accept your weakness, acknowledge your weakness and call upon me. I will answer your prayer. And Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ أَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّ مَدَاخِرِينَ Those who are too arrogant to make dua, Allah says they will enter Jahannam. And this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us there are two types of people. They are those who make dua and they are those who do not make dua. And those who do not make dua, Allah says he gets angry at them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah becomes angry at one who does not make dua. 
are the one who does not acknowledge his weakness, that he be depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. So Allah becomes angry. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that the most incapable person is the one who does not make dua. Because dua, it's a sign of your iman. If you want to measure your iman, check how much you're calling upon Allah. If you find you're calling upon him constantly, regularly, then your iman is on the up. Because a true believer, a firm believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly in dua. Why? Because he knows and she knows that they are always in need. You're always in need. Regardless of who you are, what you have. You're always in need. So you constantly beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas someone without iman or with weak iman, they do not make dua. Or they make dua when they think they need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though they need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. But they do not recognize. They do not realize it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about those people who only make dua when they are in a jam, when they are in difficulties, when they are touched by an affliction, when they need to pass an exam, when they have an immigration interview, when they need to get married, when something major is happening in their life. People who make dua at those times, and then when their dua is answered, they turn away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least a dozen times in the Quran, He tells us, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ دُرٌ دَعَا رَبَّهُ مُنِيبًا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِنْهُ نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ قَبْلِ That they are, they are among men and among women who call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are in a corner, when they have problems, when they have difficulties. But when Allah answers their dua, they forget, they turn away. They get and forget. And Allah says, those people, Allah says, تَمَتَّعُوا بِكُفْرِ تَمَتَّعُوا بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا Allah says, enjoy. With your ungratefulness, enjoy it for a little. You will soon find out. And Allah tells us, those are the people who have been deceived. Our father, Adam alayhi salam, immediately when he made a mistake, he made a mistake. Allah says, do not eat from this tree. It is haram for you. And he ate haram. But what he did immediately, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. He said, oh Allah, I have wronged myself. And forgive me. Iblis, he made dua as well. Even shaitan made dua. Even shaitan recognized the need to beg Allah. Even shaitan recognized that Allah is the only one who can grant something and give something. Shaitan made dua. But when he made dua, when he was in a corner, when he had no way out, when he had no choice, when he was thrown out of Jannah, he said, Rabbi, anzirni ila yawmi yub'asun. He said, Oh Allah, allow me to live. Allow me to live until the last day. He made dua as well. But he made dua when he had no choice. Whereas Adam, immediately he made a mistake because he had that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made dua. A true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly make dua. And when they make a mistake because they have that connection with Allah, immediately they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas those who follow the sunnah of shaitan, they do not make dua. Or they only make dua sometimes when they are in difficulties. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, if you want Allah to accept your dua in times of difficulties, then increase your dua in times of ease. When things are flowing, when you're enjoying life, make extra dua. If you want Allah to accept your dua times of difficulties, because without doubt, there will be times of difficulties. So make dua constantly, and constantly beg Allah to accept your dua. 
My brothers and sisters, dua is the most important tool and weapon of a believer. But the most serious thing I want to address tonight, how do we, as Imam said, how do we strengthen our dua? How do we make sure that when we raise our hands, there is something inside? How do we make sure our, or guarantee that our dua is accepted? What are the things we need to do? What are the manners of dua? And the first and foremost thing, if you want your dua to be accepted, is that you have to maintain a pure line of communication with Allah. Your communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that line, that phone line, it has to be pure. That means you have to constantly be on the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to follow. And there have to be sincerity and humility in the heart. That when you turn to Allah, you are turning and saying, Oh Allah, I am turning to you because I know it is only you who can give. It is only you who can help. And I am a slave, I am nothing. You turn with sincerity like our father Adam alayhi salam. He was sincere immediately. He says, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. He said, Oh Allah, I have committed a great, great sin. I have wronged myself. He showed sincerity and he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for our dua to be accepted, we need to be sincere. And when our dua is accepted, that we show we continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Adam alayhi salam, his dua was accepted and he continued to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas those who get and forget or after Allah answered their dua, they forget that they, were, they used to make dua, then that is not a sign of sincerity. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we need to call upon him with his beautiful names and attributes. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah has beautiful names, so call upon Allah using these names. Because there is nothing you will ask for. There is no dua you will make, except there are the names of Allah that is relevant to those dua. You want a job, for example? You want a promotion in your job? You call upon Allah, oh Allah, you are a razik. You are the provider, so give me. You made a mistake, oh Allah, al-ghafoor, you are the most forgiving, forgive me. Oh Allah, you are most merciful, you are Rahim, so have mercy upon me. Oh Allah, you are Malik, you are in control. So we call upon Allah, with his beautiful names, like our father Adam alayhi salam, what did he say? Rabbana. He said, oh my Lord, oh the one who provide, oh the one who take care, forgive me. So we call upon Allah using his beautiful names. And we make sure for dua to be accepted that our hearts are always attentive. You know sometimes you see people make dua. And they are talking to someone and making dua at the same time. Or they're making dua and they're checking their cell phone. Or they're make, raising, making dua and sleeping. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah does not listen to an absent-minded, heedless heart. That your heart needs to be in the dua. You need to know what you're asking for. You need to pay attention because who are you talking to when you make dua? When you make dua, you're talking to Allah. It's a conversation with Allah. And that is why your heart needs to be in it. And you need to ask in a language that you understand. That is when you become sincere because you know what you want. If Brother Zahir wants a car and he doesn't know the meaning of car in Arabic, he can't make dua in Arabic. He has to make in, oh, I want a car. And Allah knows what you are asking. But ask and that shows sincerity. Because you know your need. 
when you pick up a booklet, a book, uh, booklet with dua and you're reading it, and just for the sake of reading it and your heart is not in it, it's the book that is, you, you're not making dua, it's the book that you're reading. It's a body without soul. But when you go to Allah and you cry, and you say, oh Allah, this is what I need. This is what I need. And you say in the language you understand. Then you are sincere. Because your heart in it is in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to the hearts that are attentive, that are sincere. And you need to make sure for your dua to be accepted, you ask for what is pure. Because Allah loves what is pure. Allah accepts only that which is pure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Among mankind there is those who said, Oh Allah, give us in dunya. Just give us in dunya. Give us house, give us car, give us job, give us family, give us children. They only ask for dunya. They do not ask for forgiveness. They do not ask for mercy. What Allah says, they have not, nothing in the akhirah. And but Allah tells us among mankind, they are those who say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa kina adab nar. Among mankind, they are those who say, O oh Allah, give us hasana, good things in the dunya and the akhirah. These, they are the ones who will have a nasib, a portion. They was, are the ones who will be rewarded. Why? Because they ask for pure things in the dunya and the akhirah. Like Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many examples of the Quran, of these great prophets. Sulaiman, what did he ask for? He said, oh Allah, give me the dunya. Habli mulkan la yanbagi li ahadin min ba'di. O Allah, give me a kingdom that no one will have after me. He asked for the dunya, but he also asked for the akhirah. He said, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkur ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an'amala salihan tarda wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. He said, O Allah, give me the ability to thank you always. Keep me in good company, the salihin. Give me your mercy. Ibrahim alayhi salam, what did he beg for? Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salah wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Help me to establish salah, to worship you and my offspring. Accept my dua. All these great prophets of Allah, they ask for forgiveness, for mercy. So when we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should beg for the dunya, but don't forget the akhirah. Don't forget to beg for forgiveness and mercy and for success in the akhirah, because that is what we need more. For our dua to be accepted, we need to make sure we are very careful with the things that surround us, that we only surround ourselves with what is halal, that our job is halal, what we eat is halal, what we wear is halal, the places we go is halal, because Haram things will destroy your dua. What happened to our father Adam alayhi salam when he ate haram? Right? The, up, the, that particular tree in Jannah was haram from everything else he could have. But Allah say, do not eat from this tree, it is haram. He ate haram, what happened? Immediately the blessing, the name of Allah disappeared. His clothes disappeared. He became embarrassed. Because he ate haram. So if we are careful, if we want our dua to be accepted, we need to be careful to make sure that everything that surrounds us is halal. Because if you are not careful, if you eat haram, and you drink haram, and you say things that is haram, then there is a slight chance your dua will be accepted. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us an incident of a man who was cut off from his family and his friend was by himself in the desert, was a traveler who was desperate, who was in need. This man had all the signs of someone whose dua will be accepted. 
because he's away from his family, he's traveling, he's in need. And he raised his hand and he made dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Mat'amuhu haram, wa mashrabuhu haram, wa malbasuhu haram, anna yustajaba lahu. He is fed with what? Haram food. His drink is haram, his clothes is haram. Anna yustajaba lahu. How can his dua be accepted? How do you expect your dua to be accepted if the blood that is flowing in your vein is contaminated with haram? If the cells that make up your brain is made with haram? If your body is nourished with haram? So for our dua to be accepted, we need to make sure that everything that surrounds us is halal. And we need to make sure that when we go to Allah, when we raise our hands, when we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we show desperation. That we cry. And we show that we are in need. We just don't raise our hands and we turn away and we, we are yearning or we are talking to someone else. We show desperation. What Adam, our father Adam, and this is an, a lesson for all of us. When he made mistake, what did he say? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ He was so desperate. He combined fear and hope. He said, Oh Allah, I am desperate. If you do not forgive me now, I will be among the loser. He said, Oh Allah, if you do not forgive me, I will be among the loser. Prophet Yunus, in the belly of a whale, at the bottom of the ocean, what did he say? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Oh, he said, oh Allah, I'm desperate. I need you now. Musa alayhi salam, when he was in the wilderness, had nothing. No money, no food, no friend, just his clothes. He was eating leaves from the trees. But he said, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. He said, well, I'm faqeer. I'm poor. I'm in need. Give me anything. Anything, O oh Allah, I want now. Just give me something. He's so desperate. So when we make dua to Allah, we show that desperation. That, O oh Allah, we really need you. That we know, we are certain that Allah will answer our dua. But at the same time, we show that fear that, O oh Allah, only you can help, but if you don't help, what will happen to us? You show that you're, you're scared. And also, when you make dua, go to Allah with all your baggage. Say, oh Allah, I have sinned. Acknowledge your sin. Go to Allah and say, I wronged myself. Say, oh Allah, hey, this is my baggage. This is all the wrong things I have done. But only you can forgive me. Feel embarrassed and ashamed. Adam alayhi salam, our father, he came to Allah and what he says? Rabbana zalamna anfusana. He said, oh Allah, I am embarrassed. I am ashamed. I am not worthy of asking you. But I am still asking you. Because you are the most forgiving. He said, I am ashamed of it. Yunus, at the bottom of the ocean, he said, oh Allah, I am ashamed of what I have done. But I'm asking you, which one of us have the right or think that we deserve something and we have made so many mistakes? We don't. We have wronged ourselves, right? Are we worthy of asking? But we still ask. We still ask. Why we ask? Because Allah is Ghafoor. He's a Rahim. He's the one who gives. He's our Rabb. And we can't ask anyone else. We can't ask anyone else, so we say, well, Allah, we are asking you. When you make dua, come with your sin and acknowledge it and beg Allah to forgive you. And when you make dua, have patience. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah will accept your dua as long as you are not hasty. And the companions say, Ya Rasulullah, what does becoming hasty mean? He said, becoming hasty is when you say, I make dua and I make dua, but my dua was not accepted. So you turn away and you stop making dua. That is becoming hasty. 
if you want your dua to be accepted, have patience like Prophet Zakaria. He made dua for decades and decades until he became old. He be, until he became old. And when his dua was accepted, he could not believe it. He says, Oh Allah, Anna yakunu li ghulam. How can I get a son now? I've been asking for years and years. How can I get a son now? Allah says, Huwa alayya hayyin. This is easy for Allah. So have patience when you make dua. When you make dua, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, every dua will be accepted. Every single dua will be accepted. No one will raise their hands, and you should know that with certainty. No one will raise their hands and make dua, except your dua will be responded to before you lower your hands. Any, every time you raise your hands and make dua, there will be something in there. It will not return empty. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Allah will respond to your dua in three ways. In one of three ways. Allah will either give you what you want, what you beg for. You want a car, Allah may give you that. You want a promotion at your job, you may get that. Allah may give you what you ask for. Or Allah will prevent a harm from coming your way. Maybe you ask for that car. But that, if you got that car, you might have ended up in an accident. So Allah save you from that. Allah save you from something that would have harmed you. You make dua for something, but instead of Allah give you that, he save you from a harm. And the best response is that Allah may give you better than you ask for. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always give us better than what we ask for. Because Allah knows what is best for us. Allah may give you better than you ask for. As long as you have patience. Because Allah knows what is best for you. You may make dua, oh Allah, I want this career. You may not get that. Because Allah knows what is best for you. And you may say, look, I make dua, my dua is not accepted. You may make dua, oh Allah, I want to marry this person. Oh Allah, I want this in life. And you may not get that thing and you may become disappointed. But you need to trust that Allah knows what is best for you. How you know that person you want to marry is good for you? How you know that career will not lead you into haram? How you know that car may not end up in an accident? So you have to trust that Allah knows what is best for you. So you continue to make dua and trust that Allah will give you what is best for you. Because you don't know what is best for you. Allah knows that. And that is why you need to have patience when you make dua and beg Allah to accept your dua with what is best. For your dua to be accepted, not only you have to have patience, but you should know that whenever, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, ud'u Allah wa antum wuquna bil ijaba. Be certain Allah, that Allah will respond to your dua. And when you think your dua was not responded to or was not answered, no, it was. You should know it was answered. But only you cannot see the result. You cannot see it. For your dua to be accepted, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that you need to make sure that you do not cut off ties with your relations. That you maintain ties with your relations, your brothers and sisters, your relatives. You be good to your parents. Don't expect your dua to be accepted. And you are not talking to your relations. Or you have problems with them. Or you are disobedient to your parents. Or you're disrespectful to elders. If you want your dua to be accepted, go and mend relationship. 
Go and serve your parents and be obedient to them and respectful to them. Then raise your hands and make dua. Because that is when Allah will be pleased with you. Because if Allah is not pleased with you, then the chances of your dua being accepted is very, very slim. But if you do the right things, maintain family ties, be good to your parents, then Allah will love you. When you ask, you will get. When you ask, you will get. And there are certain times, there are certain times that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that dua, dua is accepted any times. You can make dua 24 hours a day. But there are some special time when the chances of your dua being accepted is more. There are some special time which you should capitalize on, like between the azan and the iqama. That is not a time to chit-chat and catch up with social things. That's a time to make dua. Because that's a special time when dua is accepted. The last one third of the night. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that every night, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when the last third remains, Allah descends to the lowest heaven and Allah calls out, who is calling me so I can respond? Who is asking me so I can give? Who is seeking my forgiveness so I can forgive them? And this happened every night in the last part. So that is the time. If you have difficulties in life, if you are sick, you have problems with your family, you have problems with your job, you need something desperately in life, you need to seek Allah's forgiveness. That's the time when you need to wake up when everyone else is sleeping and cry to Allah and beg Him to accept your dua. Dua is special in sujood as well. When you are making sajda, that is when, because that is when you are closer to Allah. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told, that's the closest a servant can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's the position of a slave. Bowing, prostrating. Make dua in your sajda and cry to Allah in your sajda and beg him for what you want. Show him that you are sincere in what you ask for. Dua on the day of Juma. Every day we should make dua frequently, but especially on the day of Juma. Make extra dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that on the day of Juma, there is a special hour in which Allah responds to our dua. So you should make constant and increase your dua on the day of Juma. Hopefully, inshallah, you will catch that special hour and your dua will be accepted. And there are other special times as well, but this is just a few. But, my brothers and sisters, you should make dua constantly. Ax and ax. Don't stop axing. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, oh, continue to ask. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, ask Allah, continue to ask. Because you should know your accent from the most generous Allah, who is al-Kareem, who is the most generous. You ask in him. So continue to ask. And the companions say, oh Rasulullah, we will ask for a lot. We will ask for everything. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Allahu Akbar. Allah is more than anything you can ask for. Allah is most generous, so ask. Ask even the lace of your shoe that is broken, ask Allah for it. Ask Allah to replace it for you. Ask for anything. And that is why Allah says, Udu'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me. I will answer your dua. And we should keep knocking all the time. Keep knocking. No matter what wrong you have done in life. Keep knocking. Because Allah does not close the door until the last breath. So keep knocking. Hopefully, inshallah, you will be let in. Because Allah says, Allah wants to forgive you. You have done the worst thing. Allah says, just come home. Allah wants to forgive you. Just come. Don't be despair. Don't lose hope. يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't give up from the mercy of Allah. Just come back to Allah 
and Allah, if you are sincere, Allah will replace your bad deeds with good deeds. But make dua constantly. And my brothers and sisters, make dua for each other. Make dua for each other. The Prophet ﷺ told us, among the dua, among those who have accepted dua, is the dua of parents for their children. Dua of a traveler. Dua of someone who is wronged. And dua of a brother for his brother who is absent from him. So parents, make dua for your children. Like Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made dua for us. Our father, he made dua for us. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salat wa min zuriyati. That dua is for us. We are his children. Make my offspring among those who establish dua. So make dua for your children and your grandchildren and your great grand. And children, make dua for your parents. Whether they are alive or whether they have returned to Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, among the things that will benefit a person when they leave this world, there are three things that will benefit them. إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنَ آدَمْ إِنْ قَتَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا ثَلَاثِ When a son of Adam passed away, all his deeds is cut off except three things. And what is one of those things? The dua. The dua of the children. So make dua for your parents because that dua is accepted. And make dua for each other. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is so important. No Muslim, no servant of Allah will make dua for his brother who is absent from him. Your brother is not here. But you heard he is sick. And you raise your hands and you make dua for him. Or you heard he was successful in something and you raise your hand and say, Allah, give him more. Except the angels will say, Ameen. The angels will say, Ameen, O oh Allah, accept this dua and give him the same thing. Give him the same thing, give her the same thing. So when I raise my hands and say, O oh Allah, give Brother Zahir good health and Zahir is not here, Allah will say, Ameen, O oh Allah, give Brother Nadim the same thing. When I say, O oh Allah, bless that brother with success in life, Bless that brother with a promotion in his job. The angels will say, Oh Allah, bless that brother with the same thing as well. So whenever we hear our brothers and sisters have success in life, continue to make dua for them. Allah, give them more. Because when you make dua for your brothers and sisters, you're actually making dua for yourselves. Because the angels are making dua for you. And that's one of the dua that is accepted. When your brother is not there, you just heard about them, and you raise your hands and you make dua. So continue to make frequent dua. Don't try everything and then when you're in a corner, make dua. Start everything with dua, and then try everything else. Any action, anything you're about to do in life, start with dua. And then take all the necessary steps and precaution. End with dua as well. Let dua be your first and your last action. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all so that we can be among those who make frequent dua. We can be among those who answer the call of Allah, ud'uni. Allah calls us, ud'uni, call upon me. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be among those who understand this call and make dua. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our dua with what is better for us, insha'Allah. One of the du'a the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that one of the times that du'a is accepted is after your fard salah. Right? That's one of the times that du'a is accepted. And we should capitalize on that time in making du'a after fard salah. So we finish our fard. Instead of just getting up and running off, spend a few seconds, a few minutes, and make du'a. Why? I will answer your question in one second. Why we make dua in that time? Because you have just completed a noble act. You have fulfilled the command of Allah. You have performed salah. And one of the time that we should make dua is after we complete a good deed.
Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail السلام, when they were doing the most noble thing anyone can do. They were building the house of Allah. They were building the Kaaba. And what they said? Rabbana taqabbal minna. Rabbana waj'alna muslimayni laka. They said, oh Allah, accept from us. They said, oh Allah, make us among those who submit to you always. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, oh Allah, wab'as fihim rasoolan minhum. Oh Allah, send among them a messenger. He capitalized on that opportunity to make dua. So anytime you finish a good deed, make dua. And there is an incident, and I'll say it briefly, of three men who were stuck in a cave. Right? And they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what? With the sincere deeds that they have done in life. They are good deeds. So you should call upon Allah and use your good deeds. Right? With your good deeds, all I have done these good deeds, have mercy upon me. Accept this from me. To answer the question, salah, um, dua after salah, it's important we make it. But to make dua in conjugation after salah, if people feel that that's part of salah, then it is wrong because it is not part of salah. But if people make dua sometimes, they make dua and sometimes they don't make, then that's an opinion that it is okay. The best thing though is to make dua for yourself because you know what you need and I know what I need. And I say it in the language that I understand and you say it in the language you understand and you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who can we make dua for and who we can't make dua for. We can make dua for everyone. And the dua we make for everyone is oh Allah, guide everyone. Right? Those who are non-Muslim, we beg Allah to guide them. We make dua for them. Oh Allah, guide them. Right? So we're making dua for them. Even someone who has wronged you, he said, oh Allah, guide him. And the Prophet actually, he made dua. He made dua for everyone. He said, oh Allah, guide. Guide people. So we make dua that Allah guides everyone. Does that answer your question? You make dua if that's accepted. Allah is the one who accepts dua. But we should make dua for all our brothers and sisters. Your Muslim brother or sister passed away, you should make dua for Allah to forgive them. Yes. Because that's making dua for your brother who is not in front of you. Right? You should make dua and you should make dua for them frequently. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even taught us in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي كُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفٌ رَحِيمٌ And those who came after, they said, Oh Allah, forgive us and forgive our brothers. Forgive our sisters who came before us. So your brothers and sisters passed away, yes, make dua for them. That's the only thing you can do for them, is to make dua for them. Okay, the question is making dua in the cemetery. So when you accompany the mayit, you make dua, you can make dua. You can make dua for them that, oh Allah, help these, help the mayit, make their question easy for them because now they're being questioned. And you want to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are their brothers, you are their sisters, oh Allah, make the answering of those questions easy for them. So it's a question, can you make or can you not make? Okay, whenever you visit the graveyard, there is a special dua that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us that we should make, right? You, if you visit the cemetery, you should give salam and you should and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that they are the Ahlul Kubur, yes, they are the people of the grave, that, oh Allah, you know, you beg Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to have mercy upon them, right? So you can go afterwards and you can make dua after. But what we should avoid is a lot of different things that people do that is not in conformity with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught us is to go and make dua. But any other action beyond that, we should avoid that. The question is that I said that you can make, I, I didn't actually say you can make, uh, of course you can make dua in salah, but what I said you can make dua in sujood, right? And sujood can be outside of salah. Right, the, the sijda can be outside of salah. If you know the du'a, salah has to be in Arabic. So if you know du'a in Arabic and you understand what you're saying, then yes, you can make du'a in your sujood, in your salah. One of the time that du'a is accepted to 
in salah is before the salam. You know, before the salam, and sometimes you say, right, sometimes you say after your darood, you say Rabban Atina or other dua. That is the time you can make a lot of other dua as well because that's a special time before your salam, if you know it in Arabic. If you don't know it in Arabic, then make sajda outside of your salah. And then that is when you can say it in whatever language. Oh, so the question is, you can make dua for the rest of mankind, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them. But if someone does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die as a non-believer, if you can make dua for them after. No, after they passed away, then you cannot make dua for them. Because they have died in that state of kufr. And then Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even warned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُولِ قُرْبَى That the Prophet sallallahu and those who believe, it is not right for them to make dua for the mushrikeen, even if they are close relatives. And then the, the ayah continue, وَمَا كَانَ اسْتَغْفَرُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا أَنْ مَوْعِدَةٍ وَعَدَهُ إِيَّاهُ And the dua that Ibrahim made for his father, he only made that dua because he had promised his father. It's a promise he made of, I will seek forgiveness from you. But when Ibrahim realized that his father is an enemy of Allah, he stayed away from him. And he seek, I can't make forgiveness. All right, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua, insha'Allah. And I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to always call upon him and make dua, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر